Hi, I'm Sarah from Sarah Ponder V Art. I love to paint. I can sew just about anything, but I'm pretty tool challenged. So today I'm going to show you how I make a posh aid box using very basic tools and equipment that I reckon just about anyone can do. So let's get started. I'm using pine to make my posh aid boxes and that's quite a soft wood. And the first one I did, I actually just used a screwdriver. It wasn't ideal, I don't have a lot of strength in my shoulders, so in fact it's actually easier to use a drill. I raided my husband's tool shed and I took this drill for drilling and I have a selection of drill bits. And because it was he has two, I took the other one and this one's just for screwing the drills in so I don't have to keep changing them. The other thing you need is a ruler, a pencil, and I've actually got two saws. This little one I don't use very much and probably could get away without using it. And this bigger one um, is just fantastic. I did struggle initially, but when I used a couple of clamps, thanks to my husband's suggestion, um, it really made life a lot easier. And even with my limited strength, I was able to work with it. Okay, let's chat about the materials that we need. So, first of all, we're going to have two painting boards that have sides on them. These can be any size that you want and you're just going to adapt um, the fittings to suit. We need two because they're going to sit on top of each other and we're going to cut down the middle and that's going to open out to make our crocheted box. We need hinges. These are 50 mil hinges and they fit snugly onto the side of the posh aid box. So that's something to think about. We need four of those because it's going to be two and two. On the inside of the box, it has a lid that lifts up that can actually be um, an easel holder and also will protect whatever you've got underneath, like your oil paints or your pastels from actually sort of spreading around. So for that, you're going to need these um, 35 mil hinges. A pair of those will make it stronger. The screws that we're going to use are all flathead. These are 30 mil screws. And I've got shorter ones that are 18 mil. And then these nuts and bolts, which are also flathead, and they are 25 mil. You're going to need a set of magnets that will clip together, construction adhesive to glue the magnets, PVA glue, two by four length of wood. This was 1.8 meters and I'm just cutting it down as I make things out of it. And some three mil plywood. Now this comes as a quite a big sheet. I think it was 1.8 by, I don't know, 800 or something. And we only need one piece, but you can cut that down and actually get quite a lot of extra boards out of it that you can then prime and use for painting. Let's chat about these materials then. We've got the two by four length. So this is quite long, so I decided to make it serve multiple uses. You can change that up if you want, but I just found this easier. First of all, we need to cut a pair of eight centimeter and a pair of four centimeter they're going to be put together and they're going to create the bracket which is going to attach the pochade box onto our tripod. Next you need a pair of one centimeter lengths and these are going to butt together and they will create a little platform for our easel. Then you just need a couple of half centimeter pieces and these are going to go onto the sides of the box and what they're going to do is prevent the sides from fully opening. They're just going to create a bit of a ledge that's going to keep them up like this, which means that things will roll down rather than off. And if you work with expensive pastels like I do, the last thing you want is those babies falling on the ground and smashing. Next, you want to take your lid and you're just going to measure exactly in the center, draw a line and saw through. I used clamps and honestly it made such a difference by just having a clamp on the top and the bottom it meant that I was able to saw through really easily. 
Then we've got our three mil plywood. You need to cut this so that it will fit inside your inside your box. So this is going to form a base and this is where the other hinge is going to go that will come up and make uh, an easel for your pochade. We're also going to need a narrow piece which is slightly shorter than the inside to sit on the inside. This is going to be glued in and this is just going to push the hinges slightly out from the side so that when the top part goes on, it can still close. So those are my wooden things all prepped. Let's screw it all together. First thing I'm going to do is take one half of the lid and drill some holes in that I can use for my paintbrush holder. I've got four sizes of drill bits and I did a test run on this, just a, a waste bit of wood just to check that they were the right size for my paintbrushes. Having cut this, I just need to lightly sand the edges so that I don't have any rough edges and splinters. When I do the um, holes for the paintbrush holder, I make the biggest holes closest to the edge that's going to have the hinge because that's going to have the most weight. I've marked them with a pencil and you can see I've alternated the spacing. So I'm just going to drill through. They're my big holes. Now I'm just going to do the rest. There are my holes all drilled and just give them a light sand just to take off any splintery pieces. Next, we're going to attach the hinges to the side of the box. So measure in from the sides uh, the distance that you think is going to be good. Remember these could potentially take a bit of weight if you've got um, solvents and things resting on the edges. So on this size board, I've come in five centimetres on each side. Then you just want to make sure it's perfectly lined up and mark the centre of the screw holes so that you can screw them in. We're going to do that to both sides of the bottom and both sides of the top. When you go to attach the hinges, it really helps to pre-drill the holes for the screws. Just use a really little bit to do that. Just unscrew that. Bring that in a bit. Attach. Attach the drill bit and we're good to go. So where your markings are, just line up the drill. drill your holes. Now we need to use these 18 mil screws to drill the hinges into the top and bottom of the box. Now don't make the mistake that I did of getting the hinges the wrong way around. The hinges have that bit there with the pin and if you put it on the inside it's actually going to create an, um, a higher edge so you want that you can see the pin to be on the top. Just pop the screw in and I'm just going to do this sideways and drill the screw in. And do that to all your hinges. So there we go, hinges attached and it opens out beautifully. But as you can see, even when that's level, this sort of slightly angles down and what we want is that to just come up a smidge. So what we're gonna do is take one of these little half centimeter pieces and we're just going to screw that onto the edge so that when that opens, it's gonna land on that little narrow edge. So it's a good idea just to give that like a little sand just to get the rough edges off. Then we're going to drill a small hole into the center. It only needs one screw because it's just really a support. It's not sort of providing a structural 
aspect to it. So if you just drill through the center of that, if you then mark the center of your box, or you could even hold it in place and drill through, I'm gonna do that. Let's come to the edge here. And then you can take one of those little short screws and just screw that in. Like so. Then when that opens out, it's just keeping it upright and it's catching in there. So do the same to the other side. Now I want to attach the hinges for the inside of the box. So at this point you want to decide if you've got your paintbrush holders on the left or right. I'm going to have mine on the left and I'm going to open that out. Then I want to take my strip and put some PVA glue. Just run that a bead of it along that edge. Like so. And then press that. into the side of the box. So can you see, it's pushed in there. Then I want to mark the position for my smaller hinges to go on the inside and I'm just going to screw those in. I've marked the position and I'm just going to pre-drill again. Sometimes when you're doing the hinges, it can be easier just to start them off with a screwdriver, just so you can get them into position. Like so. Next, I'm going to put a nut and bolt on the opposite side in the lower part so that when this opens out and the easel part sits across it's going to have a little ledge to sit on with the same drill bit i'm actually going to drill a hole straight through on the top here and i can put an s hook into there which can hold my water or solvents or whatever i'm using so i'm just going to have the box closed while i drill those holes So I've got two holes there and one hole on top. The bolt just goes through and screw on the nut. Now you see a little ledge. So I'm just going to do the same thing to the other side. Now I'm going to prepare my easel section. So I've just marked the center of the board and this is where I'm going to create a finger hole. The largest drill bit I have is not um, as big as my finger. So I'm just going to drill it in, in a bit and then I'm just going to cut it out. Okay, make sure it goes in the right direction. So got the hole and then I can take my hacksaw and just cut like that, got a little finger hole and give that a little sand. Next I'm going to prepare the easel edge to go into the box. So the position where I've marked my hinges, I need to then mark the same position on my um, easel stand. So I'm just gonna come in, mark that with a pencil on both sides. Then I'm going to take my two one centimeter pieces. Down. So I'm just gonna put a bit of PVA glue on here. Just a bead, oops, a bit messy. Oops, one, two,
and then I'm going to take these and just stick them in position. Like so. And I'm just going to check that they do in fact line up with my hinges, which they don't. So I'm just going to fix that. Next, I'm going to attach these one centimeter pieces that I cut for the easel support. Now, when I did my first one, I actually just had them butted against each other in the middle because I only used one hinge, but actually I think two hinges is going to be stronger. So what you need to do is measure in the size of where the hinges are. Mark the same position on your easel board so that when you line up your easel board, they are matching the hinges. Then we're going to pop that into the board, flip the hinges over, and then just mark them with your pencil so you can see where your drill holes are. Close the box, get that out of the way, and then we're going to drill the holes. Now, you don't want to drill into your table, so it's a good idea just to have something to drill into in case you go too far, which I sometimes have, and pre drill some holes. I'm just going to screw the hinges onto that board. Now the board is deliberately a bit shorter than where the hinges are so it can be a bit fiddly to get those screws in but again I just like to pop them in those short screws with my screwdriver first just to get them lined up and in position and not jumping around. So you can see the screws are partially in and then what I like to sometimes do is just get a, a bit of scrap wood, put that underneath just to lift them up a bit so that they're sitting a bit more flush and then I can screw them in. Okay, and there you can see. So. They're not going anywhere. Now I'm going to do the other one. So here's our poche box so far. Opens out, the easel support comes up with its edges, and then when it's closed down, we can actually take one of the spare boards that we made, place that on top, and close it for easy storage. So all we have to do now is create the brackets to attach it to the tripod and glue on the magnets. So let's get to it. To make the brackets I take my 8 centimeter length and my 4 centimeter length and I'm going to drill two screws in to create this L shape. To make that easier for myself I've actually got a couple of bits of wood that are going to support those pieces so that I can easily screw them in. Now thanks to my son-in-law who is a builder um, I now know that what you want to do is this in two stages. So I'm going to use a larger drill bit which will allow me to recess the screw, getting a bit fancy, and then I'm going to use a small drill bit just to take it the whole way through. So I'm just going to mark with a pencil where those two drill holes are going to go. hold them nice and firm and with this big drill bit I just want to drill in about half the distance of the thickness of the wood. Again make sure it's going in the right direction. Take that out. Put the little drill bit in. satisfying. Line it up and drill through. 
And actually, I think what I'm going to do with that, just to hold it in place, is take one of these 30 mil screws and drill them. Recessed. Now to do the other one. Now we're going to attach the brackets to the box and we're actually going to screw them through the base because that is the strongest for the screws. Now you need to have a gap that it can slide onto your tripod and on mine that's going to be 15 centimetres. The other thing you need to check is how wide that gap needs to be along there. So on mine the tripod leg is 2.5 centimetres and that's what I've allowed for with that 4 centimetre distance is 1.5 and 2.5. So on the back you just want to measure 1.5 and draw a line like so and that is going to line up with the edge of the box. So just like with the top, we are going to recess the screws. So we're going to use the 30 mil screws. I'm just going to use the larger drill bit and drill two smaller holes. And then I'll use the fine drill bit to drill all the way through and put those screws in. So I'll just do that. Sweet. Nice and strong. Et voila. Here is our poche box for plein air painting. The brackets are supporting itself on the tripod. We can open it out for extended real estate when painting. Open out the easel support which rests on the tripod. I have an S hook here, which I just pop in and I can hook on a little pot there for my mixing for solvents or water. If you've got one of these clips, that just goes on the edge like that. I like to use a palette knife sometimes. Um, the magnet's just not quite strong enough to hold it, so I've got one of these clip-on magnets. That just goes on the edge, take my palette knife, Whack that on, got my brushes of course, pop them into my convenient brush holder. How tidy is that? And then I've got a painting board. Now I could use this either as a drawing board and put a painting board on top or I could just paint straight onto this, resting onto the easel holder and just tip the edge of the tripod down, holding it nice and secure that's not going anywhere so how about that so easy to make all achievable things you can buy in local shops have a go yourself and tell me all about it i'll see you in the outdoors doing the plein air painting and of course being me everything gets decorated and it's so much fun doing this wood burning <laughs>